Welcome back. So, in this video, we're going to talk briefly about the four men okay, that they, they talk about in this article. So, the first is Homo economicus. That is the economic man. And when they say it, homo, they don't mean man as in like a man versus a woman or as a gender, but they mean man with regards to mankind. So what is Homo economicus? Homo economicus is basically a rational thinking individual who strives to maximize their benefit. Again, you think about what you learned in your own macro and microeconomics classes, that's basically Homo economicus in action. And the whole point of Homo economicus is that you can, as a manager, control people and get them to kind of exert a maximum amount of uh, output with bureaucracy and, and these kinds of techniques. Bureaucracy, managerialism, etc. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the, set, in the next video. Now they also talk about Homo ludens. Now there's not too many examples in the workplace where you see Homo ludens. Homo ludens is the playful man. Now, I always give a great example of the playful man uh, coming from elementary school. Now, I don't know if some of you played handball. Uh, and I don't mean, I know in Europe they play a sport that's called handball where, you know, you're throwing uh, a large ball at something kind of looks kind of like a soccer goal. I'm talking about handball the way they play it in the United States where you've got a large wall. Some people call it wall ball. I've also heard it called that. But you've got a large wall and, you know, you hit, you hit the ball. It must bounce against the ground once, then hit the wall and then come back down and then you can hit it either before it bounces or you can wait till it bounces once and then you hit it. And the goal of handball is to prevent uh, your opponent from either hitting the wall, hitting the, the ball so that it you know, strikes the wall with um, exactly one bounce or they're not able to get to the ball and hit it uh, before that second bounce occurs. That's you know, pretty simple. So you're, you're just hitting a ball back and forth. You know, maybe you use angles and stuff and you're kind of running around. All right, so when I was in elementary school, I had this uh, buddy named Nolan. And Nolan had, like, his own version of handball. Um, and I remember one time, like, the ball was, like, the perfect and I, I just I whacked that thing. And it went really far. And Nolan, I knew, wasn't going to be able to run that fast. Now, you have to remember, we're, like, 10. So I knew Nolan wasn't going to get that fast. So what he does is he takes his hand, and he just goes like this under the ball. And then he said, oh, you lost. I said, what do you mean I lost? He's like, that was a, called a chip. I said, what's a chip? He said, well, if you do like this under the ball, that counts as a hit, then you've got to run back and hit it again. Well, I'd never heard of a chip. In fact, the only person I ever knew that did chips was my buddy Nolan. And so Nolan was an example of the playful man. Well, I learned that I could do chips too. So when I would do handball, I would do the chip too. But then Nolan came up with something called the shoe shiner, where he would just take his foot and swipe it under the ball too. And that counted as a hit in Nolan's world. And then, you know, every time I played handball, Nolan came up with, like, these new moves. And it was really hard to beat Nolan. He wasn't particularly athletic or anything, but he was very creative. And Nolan was the playful man. Basic normal rules of handball did not apply when you played with Nolan. And that's what this article is actually trying to embrace, is re to bring back that kind of creativity that we experience as children. Right? That's when all the really, really cool ideas come, uh, come out, right? And again, think about how beautiful it is when you're a child on a playground, right? I mean, I think about when I was in elementary school, you know, at the 10 o'clock recess, I could be He-Man, and then at the lunchtime recess, I could be Wolverine. And, you know, how many times in your, in your professional lives can you be He-Man and Wolverine in the same day, right? It's not going to happen, right? And that's because this playfulness has been stamped out. Now, it's not just playfulness, like, in terms of playing. Right? But think of all the times you're at work, and you're like, man, there's so many rules in place. What if I could do that? And I bet you that thing you're thinking of, what if I could do that, it's probably like a really good idea that'd be really successful. But you can't because there's rules and regulations and time and blah, blah, blah. So all that creativity is stamped out. And this is unfortunately meaning that a lot of really, really great ideas get stamped out. We'll talk about that um, in the next video. But that's the homo ludens. Now there's also homo neurons, which is me. That's the storytelling man. A storytelling man basically reasons through stories. Um, you probably noticed, those of you that watch my videos, including the fact this one on, on Homo Ludes I just talked about, I explained my buddy Nolan to you guys through the story of Homo Ludens. Right? And I told Nolan's story, and therefore you were able to relate to it. A Homo Narans is somebody that creates worlds, creates images, 
creates sense making and sense giving all through stories. I really believe that stories are a powerful thing. And chances are, when you heard that story, those of you little boys that played handball probably knew somebody kind of like Nolan. Right? So you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, those of you little boys probably also kind of laughed when I talked about you know getting to be He-Man at the 10 o'clock recess and Wolverine at the 12 o'clock recess. You probably laughed. You probably related to it. You probably remember it. But storytelling, especially in a Mary Parker Follett sort of way, is also very useful for motivating people, right? You can tell a story about someone you knew, someone who's successful, unsuccessful, and relay that story, and people can see themselves in that story, how they fit into that story, and then hopefully they change their actions or behaviors, and they can contribute to your organization's mission for their own ways and their own reasons. This is the storytelling man. Then you've also got homo traditionalis. That is the person that is basically locked into ancient ways of doing things. It's almost like isomorphism in action. Well, why did you do it this way? I did it this way because that's the way we've always done it around here, and that's the way we're going to do it till the day I die. We all know somebody like that. That is the homo traditionalis. So these are the four types of men that are outlined in this article. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to talk about how we have shifted a lot from homo ludens and possibly homo neurons more towards the homo economicus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one.